Okay. Okay, now we are recording our Summer Vista webinar. So the folks that aren't able to join us will be able to, uh, to have access to the information um, about the program. So as I was just reviewing, um, this is the history of our placements in the past. Um, we also have ha seen some great um, results from the Summer Vista program. Um, so this next slide just provides some of the output, um, numerical um, outcomes of the program in terms of the number of community volunteers that, uh, that Summer Vistas have been able to work with. Uh, I'm getting a little alert that the, we may have be having issues with audio. So please do let me know if you're having trouble hearing me. Um, but so in terms of outputs, um, in ter you know, the numbers of volunteers that Summer Vistas are able to work with and the number of hours that those volunteers contribute um, is a really important feature um, of what, you know, of the goals of the program. You know, for Summer Vista, our goal is really to have to provide affiliates with a resource to who can provide extra support to your volunteers during your busy, con busiest construction um, season. Um, and the role of the Summer Vistas really should be um, largely focused on supporting those volunteers on the work site. So they can be doing that hands-on building side by side with the volunteers, um, but it shouldn't be just the Summer Vista out on the job sites doing the work. They should be working with groups of volunteers and leveraging that those um, folks in your community and, and helping make sure that they have a good experience. Um, in terms of the number of homes that Summer Vistas have worked on, even though our, the number of members we've had have fluctuated over the years, we have seen steady increases in the number of projects that they've been able to do. So even with only 10 Summer Vistas last year, they were able to work, um, to work on 31 homes, and that was a combination of new construction and a brush with kindness. Um, so that that's another goal is that, you know, we would like um, to the Summer Vista is a resource to help your affiliates serve more families. So if through this program you can do more brush with kindness projects or um, or take on another build that you might not have been able to do otherwise, um, that's good information to include in your application um, in terms of when you are asked to describe, you know, what how you how Summer Vistas will help your affiliates serve more families. Okay. Um. So next up, um, what can Summer Vistas do? So here we have a great photo. This is one of our Summer Vistas um, from a couple years ago uh, who was up in Northwoods uh, with, in Bemidji uh, with Habitat for Humanity up there. His name was Christian. Um, he was a St. Olaf student who um, wanted to, who was originally actually from Norway, but wanted to spend his summer um, working with Habitat and uh, so, went up to, had never been to Bemidji, but uh, was an adventurous spirit and went up to Bemidji for the summer and did some great work with them. Had his first experiences fishing and doing a lot of things uh, and bonding with the volunteers there. So um, so that's a great example of, of one of our summer vistas from the past. Um, in terms of the kinds of things that summer vistas can do, um, in contrast to the year-long VISTA program, Summer VISTA is really about direct service. Um, so that hands-on, you know, helping on construction sites, you'll see the photo we've got down here. This is our friend John uh, down in Winona, who you heard from earlier, um, working with one of his Summer VISTAs. Um, uh, you know, you can see they're on a job site there measuring, looks like doing some siting work. So, um, you know, those are the types of activities your Summer VISTAs should be um, should be engaged in. Um, and we do have a position description, just a standard one that we use for all of the positions. So I'm just going to take a minute to review that. I'm going to switch to a different screen here. Hopefully, if my computer will cooperate. Well, my technology does not seem to be wanting to cooperate with me this morning. So uh, we'll just, so we'll not switch over to that position description, but um, the email that I had sent out about Summer Vista, there's a link there to a, the Google Drive folder for Summer Vista. 
and there's a, a copy of the Summer Vista position description in that folder. Um, so I would encourage you to review that and the kinds of duties and responsibilities that are outlined there. And if that's not in line with what you are hoping to have your Summer Vista do, um, then you know, give me a call so that we can chat about what you have in mind and make sure that it's a good fit for the, the kinds of duties that are appropriate for Summer Vista um, based on the expectations of our funder. Um, okay, so next up, um, we heard some, um, I think in the, as part of the introductions, we heard some great examples um, from Nathan and John and Kevin about what Summer Vistas have helped their affiliate accomplish in terms of, um, John mentioned being able to work with more groups and Nathan as well. So, um, you know, if if there, sometimes as an affiliate, you might have groups that approach you, you know, be it a local group from a church that wants to, you know, have a have volunteers come and work with you for maybe a week, um, you know, in a larger group of volunteers. And that can create a challenge um, if you don't have, you know, the staffing to support that on your job site. So having summer vistas who serve full time, so they're they're going to be with you 40 hours a week. Um, for eight full weeks, um, you know, they're an extra set of hands or a couple extra sets of hands that can help you um, to make it more feasible to work with those those kinds of group volunteers. Um, it can also help in, um, you know, if, if groups aren't really something that your affiliate would be doing, but, um, you know, you, you want to um, have more days um, where you're able to have volunteers on the job site during the summer when the weather is nice. Um, and maybe more people are, especially after a winter like this, you might have a lot of people that have cabin fever and, and want to be out on your job sites. So, um, so you can extend, you know, it, it gives you the opportunity to maybe extend the number of days that you have volunteers on, on the, um, on a job site. Um, some affiliates, um, set up the schedule for their summer vista so that they're working maybe Tuesday through Saturday. Um, so that if you have, if you want to do Saturday build days, um, you know, you can have your summer vistas on site. It, they don't have to be there Monday through Friday. Um, it, but typically you should, you know, plan for a, a, a five day, you know, a standard um, type of work week, um, whether that's, you know, so so five days, whether that's Tuesday through Saturday or Monday through Friday, or um, or if it is, it varies by week depending on the weather conditions. You know that's that's certainly an option too. But um, but they should be serving full time, so at least forty hours a week. Um, and if you have any, you know, cons and so I guess it's important to think through what projects do you have lined up for the summer. And before you apply to make sure that you have an adequate amount of, um, of work to keep a summer vista or more than one summer vista engaged full time, um, you know, there's, um, this is a, a resource that, um, you know, we're expected to, to use diligently. So our, um, you know, we want to make sure that, the, that they are given a full time experience and, um, and, and have things to do. Another thing to take into account when you're, you know, making your plans for the summer is weather. Um, as Kevin Warden mentioned, uh, you can have weather conditions like a late spring that delay a pro that maybe you know move you back from where you thought you'd be on your construction timeline. Um, also, we've had issues some summers where we've had really hot Julys, and there's been days when it's just not safe for volunteers to be outside working in the heat. Um, so it's important to think about what's your contingency plan for weather and if the weather conditions aren't feasible for the summer vistas to be outdoors working on work sites, you know, what are some alternate projects that they can do that are maybe indoors or, um, you know, or, you know, other places you can plug them in. Um, so um, I'd love, I think it would, this might be a good opportunity for people to share some examples of, um, you know, what kinds of other activities have you maybe engaged your summer vistas in when there's, um, when weather has been uh, an issue? Um, so if you can either raise your hand and I can unmute you if you want to share, or um, you could um, type me in a question. I would love to have somebody, though, speak up. So um, 
but I think it would be great to just share some examples of what what affiliates that have used the program before, what you've done when weather conditions have been um, not so great for your summer vistas. Okay, Kevin Warden, thank you for volunteering. Okay, Kevin, I've unmuted you. Oh, are you there? All right, person raising their hand the first, the brave or foolish person doing so. Yeah, I'm here. I can hear me. Yes. All right. Very good. Um, yeah, when we've had uh, the humageddon or the other uh, days that prevent us from safely working on site, or we quit early for the day, or what have you, um, if we can do so safely, it seems like we're always needing to have a better inventory of our tools, or to have um, better organizational systems. And, and uh, there have been times when the summer vistas have helped us do that. Um, working on site, like I said, only on days when we've had to call things early because of weather. And that's a combination of work that we can we can bring indoors for the smaller tools and get them in uh, cool cooler weather mm -hmm. and uh, uh, do some things like that uh, to keep them productive but keep everybody safe while we're at it. Great. Thanks, Kevin. That's a great example. Okay. Um, so... Um, so those are, you know, things to be thinking about as you're thinking ahead about what, you know, what your plan would be for your summer with summer vistas. Um, so some program details, um, just to make sure you have on your radar. Um, as I mentioned, I, we anticipate we'll be able to place between 10 and 12 summer vistas with affiliates. Um, and typically, you know, we've placed one or two members um, there have been a few kind of, um, unusual situations where we've had more than two, but, um, so as you're thinking about, you know, your application and how many you will request, um, you know, I encourage you to think carefully about what's the right number. And, and if you're having challenges kind of figuring out, well, we know for sure we have enough for one, but we think maybe two, but we're not certain, um, you know, feel free to give me a call and I can talk through it with you too. I might be able to help um, you know, you suss out what um, would be the most feasible based on your situation. Um, the Summer Vista program will start with a training on June 2nd um, that all the Summer Vistas will be required to attend, and that training takes place here in the Twin Cities, most likely here at the Habitat Minnesota office. Um, and that's a training we're required to provide just to review the requirements of the program and what the benefits are they re that Summer Vistas receive through AmeriCorps. Um, and then we do also do a great training um, with them, with the Summer Vistas on working with volunteers on the job site. Um, and that training is led by Patricia McLeese, who is the a volunteer manager at Rochester. Um, Patricia has done this training for us since our first group of summer vistas, and it's always everyone's favorite part of the training. So it's it's really a great um, you know orientation to how do you provide volunteers with a good experience, and um, really helps frame that up for um, the group of, of summer vistas. Um, the summer vistas will serve for eight weeks, um, so it is you know just a short term program. Um, and, um, and eight weeks is what we're, um, approved to do for this year. Um, the summer vistas are expected to serve full time. And as I mentioned, you should, um, kind of plan ahead, have contingency plans in advance for weather, construction delays, those sorts of things. Um, also make sure that in your application, um, one thing not to do, um, I know sometimes when applying for funding, one of the things organizations do is say, well, we know that we need one or, you know, we know that we could use a certain amount, but we're going to ask for more because we expect that they're going to give us less than we ask for. Um, <laughs> in the case of this, I really um, encourage you, you know, if, if you know that you only need one VISTA position, only request one. Um, if you're certain that you can accommodate more than you can request more than that, but it, we get into a difficult situation if your affiliate asks for more than you need, and then we approve the placements, and then later you come back and say, actually, we don't need this position, then we're left with um, money that we're not spending, um, which when you're working with a federal grant, um, 
you know, one of the things about that is they want you to use all of the money. So, um, so don't request more than you need. Um, and again, if you need help figuring out how much you need um, or how many vistas you need, uh, get in touch with me and I can help you with that. Um, cost of the program. So um, to host a summer VISTA, affiliates would pay $500 per member. Um, that would be, um, if you're approved for a position, we would invoice you. And, um, you know, typically we ask that um, that payment, um, that you submit those um, fees by, the, by early May. Um, so the, the first week of May, uh, if that would be, if that, if your affiliate anticipates any challenges with the timing of that payment, um, again, just let me know and we can um, kind of work out an arrangement of, of you know, of timing for that, if that would be an issue. Um, in addition to the fee that affiliates pay to help cover the, the cost of the program, there are additional costs that you should just plan for at your site. Um, so example, for example, mileage to travel between job sites. Um, so if your affiliate's going to have more than one project going on and the summer VISTA is going to need to travel, you know, between job sites or if they're going to have to use their own vehicle to maybe make trips to Home Depot to pick up supplies or, you know, any work related travel that they need to do for the position, your affiliate would need to reimburse them for those expenses. So that's something to plan for and to budget for. Um, in addition, any special tools or equipment that they might need, um, you know, if, if you're going to require that they, or if, if they're going to need steel-toed boots or something, um, you know, to do the work on the job sites and that's not something they already have, um, you might want to cover the cost of that because um, the, the summer vistas will be paid about... Um, but, uh, well, the same they they receive the same amount as a year long Vista does um, for per month. So it's between nine hundred and twenty eight and nine hundred and um, fifty dollars a week, or not a week. I'm sorry, a month. Uh, so you know, not a whole lot. Um, so any you know, if if they're going to need to purchase equipment, that is something that your affiliate would probably want to help cover the cost of because you know they're not earning a whole lot from this. Um, through this program. Um, and then if there's any other expenses that um, those of you that have worked with Summer Vistas, any other things you can think of that, you're, that you've covered that I didn't mention, feel free to just um, submit those um, as questions and I can share those with the rest of the group. Um, yeah, thanks, John. John mentioned um, thank you gift. So maybe budget some for recognition um, for after, you know, at the end of their service, you might want to, um, you know, do a little um, party picnic or um, or buy them some nice habitat swag or something as a as a thank you gift. So that's another budget item. Thanks, John. Okay. Um, so application information and the selection process. Um, that the application form is available online um, in the Google Drive, and um, I'm not going to try to open that again because it didn't want to work for me earlier, but um, it, it's a Word document that you can download um, from the Google Drive, and there's it's a, a two-page application. I think there's five or six questions, um, but you um, your completed ap application should be no more than two pages. Um, it's intended to be a brief application, um, and so we'd like you to keep it to two pages um, because we do have folks that will be reviewing it and reviewing those applications in addition to the year-long VISTA applications. So, um, so less is more when it comes to your application, although do be thorough in providing you know, your responses. I think one or two sentences isn't necessarily going to be <laughs> going to cut it. You know, we do want a thorough response. Um, you should submit your applications by five o'clock on February 5th. So um, that's coming up shortly. But again, it's a short application. So hopefully um, that's that won't be too much of a challenge to get that done. But um, please do get those in by 5 p.m. on the 5th. Um, and you should email those to me as an attachment. Um, and then the applications will be reviewed um, by 
um, folks here at Habitat Minnesota, as well as by our program officer from the Corporation for National Community Service, which provides the funding for this program. Um, so you do want to make sure, again, to be thorough and complete in your application because, the, you know, we want to demonstrate that we're not, um, you know, that we're doing due diligence and thinking through carefully um, our need for Summer Vista and how we'll use the program um, and that we're, you know, taking the application process seriously. Um, also, it is possible that we could have more requests for summer vistas than we're able to place. So, um, you know, it, it may be that there's that there is a, you know, that this would be a competitive process with other affiliates that are applying. So you want to make sure to put your best foot forward in putting your application together. Um, okay, so recruitment and training. Um, so the recruitment process is um, actually exactly the same recruitment process as we have for the um, year-long VISTA program. So, um, you know, it does take some time to um, review applications and do your screening process and then to do interviews. Um, similar to the year-long program, the summer VISTA applicants um, need to have professional references um, submitted with their application. Um, sometimes for Summer Vista that can be a little more challenging because sometimes our Summer Vista folks are uh, maybe just graduating from high school or they, um, so they might not have a lot of previous work experience. Um, so if you have a Summer Vista candidate that you're really interested in but they're having challenges coming up with a professional reference, um, you know, please get in touch with me or um, Jody, our VISTA leader, who will be working with, who would be working with you on recruitment. And um, we can help you brainstorm ideas for who could be possible professional references that you could recommend um, that the Summer VISTA, you know, get um, for their application. But that requirement for professional references is a requirement of, the, of our funder. So we're not, um, although, you know, I, we all understand the challenges sometimes of getting those professional references, but I'm not able to make an exception to that requirement. So, um, so we'll work with you and help you find those if you have a candidate that's, um, that's having challenges with professional references. Um, your summer VISTA candidates need to be approved by Habitat Minnesota and the corporation. Again, that's the same process as with year long VISTA. Um, they need to attend the training in the Twin Cities. And um, the training that we do provide here, um, what we will not cover in that training is construction techniques. Um, we're not going to train them on how to hang siding or how to uh, lay shingles or those sorts of things. Because what we found is that construction techniques really vary by affiliate, um, you know, and vary by who the the um, construction manager is or, or the, um, the, you know, the person leading the build. And so um, rather than us training folks in on how to, how to do those sorts of things, it makes more sense for them to get that training on site with your affiliate. Um, so, you know, if, if you don't have a lot of folks to provide that kind of on site training, then when you're recruiting, you might want to look for people with construction experience who already you know, have familiarity with some of those, with how to, you know, hang siding or do something like that. Um, that can make it more challenging to recruit candidates if you, if you have those needs. Um, but, um, you know, our typical summer VISTA is, um, you know, maybe a college student who needs a summer job, who's maybe done a, a build with Habitat on a spring break trip or something like that. So they've done some hands-on work on a job site, but they don't typically come to us with a lot of construction skill and background. We have some that come maybe out of a trade program that have, you know, that have more experience and skills, but, um, but more typically they're, um, you know, they're, they don't have that construction expertise coming in. So you want to think about how would, how will you get them the training to be able to do the work you need them to do. Um, let's see. Reporting. So just um, there are a few things also that we would that you your affiliates would be um, required to report on if you host summer vistas. 
Um, so that's those numbers that I, we reviewed at the beginning in terms of um, we'll ask your affiliates to report on the number of volunteers who the Summer Vistas worked with and the number of hours that those volunteers contributed. Also, the number of homes that the Summer Vistas worked on, whether those were new construction homes or a Brush with Kindness projects. Um, and then the number of family members living in those homes um, is another um, piece of information we would ask you to report. Um, and those reports, uh, we ask that those are completed by the Summer Vista supervisor, so a staff member at the affiliate, um, the, rather than having the, the, Vista, the Summer Vista members complete them. Um, and that's just because of the nature of the kinds of information we're asking for. It makes you know, as a summer VISTA working out on your job site, they're not necessarily going to have, um, you know, a computer in the office where, and, and they're not necessarily the ones tracking how many volunteers and the number of hours and, and those sorts of things. So um, we ask that those reports be completed by a, the supervisor or an affiliate staff member. Okay, um, so that's kind of the big picture overview of, um, you know, the, what the program's about, the kinds of things Summer Vistas have done, um, requirements if you'd like to host a Summer Vista. Um, are there questions that, um, are, if anyone has any questions, or, um, feel free to either submit, type in your, and chat in a question, or raise your hand, and, or if there's maybe, for those of you that have had Summer Vistas, if there's a piece of advice or, or tip, um, that you'd like to offer to others um, or share. We've got a few minutes here um, before we before we wrap up. So questions about uh, the program or if you have questions for your colleagues who, um, who who are on the call who have had the summer vistas about how they've recruited or something like that, that um, that's certainly something we could chat about as well. so. Oh, you're also quiet. Oh, there's Kevin again. <laughs> okay, Kevin, I'll unmute you. Hi, Kevin. Oh, oh, there we go. I think. Hi, Sarah. Kevin again, raising his oh. hand. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Can you hear me now? Yes. Yep. All right. Verizon commercial. Kevin again, raising his hand. <laughs> All right. Um, one of one thing that came to mind was that we. One piece of advice would be do really put the due diligence into the hiring process. We probably spend as much time in the selection process of a summer vista as we do for a full year affiliate. And it seems like a lot when we're going through it and, and I always uh, inevitably wonder if it's worth it for just an eight week position. But I remind myself that the, this person for, for most of our volunteers really is going to be the face of the affiliate. and their experience with that summer vista is what they're going to remember by and large is their experience with us as an organization so putting that due diligence and that time into selecting the right person or people for the for the summer vista positions has really been beneficial for us great thanks kevin that's um i think a really great tip and um you know i would add to that too it, it is a lot of work on the front end i think in recruiting and finding the right person um but you know, also it's kind of an investment in the, in the future and that sometimes, you know, those folks who serve with you as a summer Vista might come back to work with you in another role. Um, and we've seen that happen at some affiliates where they've had somebody who is a summer Vista and then maybe went on to be a year long Vista with them or um, came back as a volunteer um, in the future. So um, it is, it is work on the front end, but it, it's worth it. I think as an investment in terms of they're the face of your organization and also, you know, they might, they'll hopefully maybe stay involved beyond just their summer Vista term. Thanks for sharing, Kevin. You bet. Great. Um, and John Corcoran submitted um, a question. This is a great one. So in terms of benefits for the summer Vistas, um, how much is the education award? Um, so yeah, I should have had a slide in there about the benefits, um, but the, it's the same for Summer Vistas as it is for year long. Um, so Summer Vistas, the education award is, um, oh no, that's not, that's not right. 
oh brain <laughs> the uh, morning commute has <laughs> definitely uh got me on the wrong track this morning okay so the education award for summer vistas um is i have it listed in the position description i'm going to try again to to um to pull up that position description. Let's see if my computer is going to be more cooperative. Uh, let's try this way. Aha! Okay. So, Summer Vista position description. Here we go. Okay. So, the Education Award um, is $1,175 for a summer VISTA. So for that eight weeks of service, um, they receive a living allowance of about $200 a week. Um, the exact amount varies depending on the location. Um, but then they, the education award is that $1,175, um, and they can use that for student loans or other educational expenses. Or if, um, if, if they prefer, they can choose to take a cash stipend of $250 um, and that they can use for any um, anything that they'd like. Um, so those are the um, those are two of the benefits. Um, and the the summer vistas do not receive any um, any health benefits during their service. Um, so they um, so that that is one thing that differs from the year-long program is that there's not they don't get enrolled in the Vista Health Benefits Plan. Um, if they're injured on the job site or something like that, then um, we do need you to um, inform us. And there is an accident report, and they may be eligible for um, coverage through the Federal Workers Comp um, program. Otherwise, um, the volunteer insurance that your affiliates carry um, might also be something that. Um, would come into play if they're injured while serving, you know, in the course of their duties as a summer vista. So that's something to um, to keep in mind as well. Well, as I had meant, I had promised that we would um, wrap up by ten forty five. So, um, you know, I do have some more time. I can linger if anybody has any additional questions. Um, feel free to um, raise your hand um, or um, chat in a comment. Okay, I see Pam. I'll go ahead and unmute you. Okay, are you there, Pam? I am. Hi, um, Pam. I have one question. Yes. Yeah. Um, do they have to be a college or high school student, or can it be somebody such as a teacher or somebody who's looking for a summertime position? Yeah, no, that's a great question. Um, it, you know, it is open to um, anyone. They do have to at least be 18 years of age. So they have to have, um, you know, reached their 18th birthday. Um, mm -hmm. But there isn't, um, there's no maximum age limit. Um, so we, and we have had um, some in the, some summer vistas in the past who were maybe um, teachers, you know, who were on break for the summer or, um, or other folks who, you know, had positions that, um, that they weren't doing during the summer. So, um, so yeah, it doesn't have to be, um, uh, our, our traditional typical, the typical demographic would be, um, a younger person, you know, maybe out of high school, right out of high school or during, or in college, but that's not required to be um, who they are. Okay. Yeah. Great. Okay. Um, any other final lingering questions or or advice um, that uh, anybody has to has to chip in before we wrap up? Okay, well, hearing none, I think we'll go ahead and um, wrap up the call. But um, certainly, if you have questions that um, about something that we covered or didn't cover, and you'd like to talk more. Um, feel free to give me a call um, or send me an email and I'll be happy to chat with you. Um, but otherwise, we'll look forward to seeing your Summer Vista applications. Again, they're, you know, due um, 
that date was February 5th, I believe. Um, but we certainly um, welcome early submissions. So if you if you get your application done sooner than that, um, you know, we'd love to, to have you send that in um, when you're ready. And then um, we, I guess that is one more thing I will say about timing is we have moved up the timeline of when we're going to start um, recruiting for summer VISTA positions and when we'll be notifying you. Um, we wanted to give start the summer VISTA recruitment process before the year-long VISTA process, which in the past we've started them simultaneously, and that gets to be a lot. So we're hoping to start recruiting for these summer VISTA positions in mid-February, um, which is about at least a couple weeks earlier than we've been able, or maybe even a month earlier than we've been able to in the past. Um, so that's why the applications are due a little bit earlier this year. Um, but we're hoping that that'll have good results in terms of um, being able to find and get our applicants recruited sooner. Uh, okay, great. Well, thank you all again for, um, for joining us on the call today, and um, we'll look forward to receiving your applications. Oh, I think, oh yeah, I saw a couple. Um, um, and just if for anybody that might still be there, um, in term, Pam had asked about the um, slides, if they would be available. And um, we can't, you know, I'll check, double check with April on that to see if we can, I don't know if I can email you the PowerPoint because of the size of the file, but um, the, I can, I'll, we'll look into either getting this posted in the Google Drive so that you can print it out if you want to review the information. Um, otherwise, um, if, if we can email it, I'll try that. So I'll get back to you about that via email to let you know where you can find this information printed um, and go from there. Okay, thanks everyone, and um, we'll be hopefully talking to you all soon.